I will they'll communicate. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's actually, it's been nice to have some sort of just a different type of engagement, you know, with this yeah. sort of lockdown thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Just, that's it's true. just a fun thing to do, I thought. Yeah. Hello, Malisa, how are you? Nice to see you. You have to put on your micro. How is Egypt? Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, we hear you, Malisa. Now you're gone. Now, put on your micro. One, one, two, two. Yeah. Elka there. Hello, Malisa. How are you? Yes, I'm good. I don't know if you can hear me. Now I can hear you. Now I can Yes, hear you. everything's okay. We are in semi-lockdown. Okay. Uh, it's Ramadan. People are fasting. So it's yeah. a very special atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a little Not bit working fun. like everybody else. Yeah. 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 Yeah, good to see you. I see that the dog of Hugo also want to take a look. Oh, is it? Was it your dog? <laughs> yeah, I saw your dog. It's so funny. <laughs> it's amazing just how much you can see when you just you know, and people sit there. They're having their cups of tea, and they oh, they don't realize we're sitting watching them. And yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, people. It is uh, it's seven o'clock. And I think uh, we, we should start. There are still people uh, stepping in. And um, so the, the presentation will be um, recorded. So uh, Jurek uh, started the record to recording. So uh, thank you for all uh, being present. Although you are far away, you are present uh, with us, with Pantarai, uh, with Matt. Welcome to Matt. Yeah, well, Matt, it's fantastic that uh, you want to do this uh, webinar with us uh, tonight. Um, it, it's fantastic, and I think it's a good opportunity, this webinar, for many people um, to learn a little bit more about your work. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity, so when we contact uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I directly agreed to do this, uh, to this, to this webinar. And I want to start with a little bit an introduction, uh, why I think it is so important for osteopaths and other disciplines in, in healthcare uh, to work with your method. Uh, because in osteopathy, uh, we, we try to work with the, the self-healing force. And uh, when you look at um, the, the new definitions of osteopathy, uh, there is um, uh, in, in 2012, there is the scope of osteopathic practice in, in Europe, and they, they presented a, a new model of osteopathy because uh, osteopathy uh, started in the, in the 19th century and it, it developed a lot. And I think it, people thought it was necessary to have a new definition. So, and uh, that's why all the people in, in Europe or from different countries. Uh, in the European Federation of Osteopaths came together and, and made this scope of osteopathic pra practice in Europe. And it is not only for Europe that the, the model that is presented in this, uh, this scope, it is also uh, used in uh, countries outside of Europe. And uh, there is an excellent book, what I can recommend. It's written by some it Italians in cooperation with Yeruli who is an uh, American and he was the, the, the American editor and Paolo Tozzi was a European editor. Uh, and in this book, the, the, the model of five uh, is, is presented and uh, also the, the somatic dysfunction is, uh, is, is presented uh, in a little bit more scientific way as that we, we, we used to do it. Of course, we have the lectures of Kor and other very important people, but I think the way they do it, it's much more broader and much more up to date for uh, the osteopathic profession in 2020. When we look at um, the uh, World Health Organization uh, definition of osteopathy, you can see that uh, they give the definition 
uh, you can see it here, Osifari is a system of medicine that emphasizes the theory that the body can make its own remedies. So it's about the self-healing force, what is already described by Andrew Taylor still. Uh, given the normal structures, the relationships, environmental conditions and nutrition. Uh, and um, it differs from allopathy, primarily because of the attention to the body mechanics and um, it is a manual treatment uh, and a manual way of diagnosing. And essential in, in osteopathy is the, the, the somatic dysfunction. And the somatic dysfunction, uh, uh, you, 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 you can find the definition uh, as an, an, an impaired or altered function of the related components of the, of the somatic system. Uh, so it means that there are uh, impaired function in the, the musculoskeletal system, uh, so the skeleton itself, the joint, the myofascial structure, but also all the structures that are related to this. Uh, so the vascularization, the lymphatics and the neural elements. And uh, when you then look at uh, what is, where can you find the somatic dysfunction? And then we, oh, sorry. You can see that the somatic dysfunction can be systemic. So it means that all the body is, the complete body is in dysfunction. It can be in a region like in a leg or in an arm or part of the abdomen or somewhere. Then you call it a regional uh, somatic dysfunction. Uh, and uh, it can be locally. So uh, one vertebra uh, a joint somewhere. Um, it is all, uh, when you were looking for the, the references, I everywhere put the references. So when you want to have the presentation afterwards, it is a short presentation, but you can take a look at the references and also the book. In the, um, the book and in the scope of osteopathy, in the book of Ruby and in the scope of osteopathy, the, the, the model of five is presented. And this model of five means that uh, the body has an impaired um, self-healing force when there are problems in the different models of the human body. So it means, for example, uh, the, the, the self-healing force of, of the body is disturbed when there is a mechanical problem uh, in the body. So it can be a joint a restriction of an elbow, a restriction of a vertebra, a restriction of a rib, but also can be a restriction in motion of an, of an organ or even a suture, a cranial suture, uh, can have a, an, an impaired mechanical uh, function and this will influence the self-healing mechanism. The same for the neuro neurological model. It means that the self-healing system is disturbed when there is an impaired neurological function. It can be that there is a uh, compression of a nerve, but it also can mean that there is a disbalance in the autonomic nervous system, for example, uh, due to stress or due to trauma uh, and so on. And this will influence, of course, the self-healing force. Then we have the respiratory circulatory system. It means that uh, the self-healing force can be impaired when there is a problem in breathing or in circulation. And circulation, it's a very broad, uh, Terrain, uh, because it can be the arterial circulation, can be the venous system, can be the lymphatics, can be the cerebrospinal fluid, and so on. And then we have the metabolic part of the body. So it is the hormones, uh, it is the immune system, it is nutrition, it is detoxification. So when this is not uh, functioning well, uh, this is influencing the self healing force. And then, of course, we don't forget that people. Uh, are social beings that have, um, we have our brain, which is very specific for humans. And so it means that the self healing force also can be disturbed when there are social or uh, psychological problems. Uh, this also can influence the self healing force. So here you see uh, the dysfunction and the dysfunction can be influenced by all kinds of restrictions and the somatic dysfunction can be uh, present in all of these uh, models. So today we concentrate a little bit of the, on the biopsychosocial uh, model uh, because Matt is going to give a presentation. 
So I want to tell you a little bit, uh, because he will go into detail, uh, in, in about how this functions. So let's say you, you encounter uh, a virus. So let's say this is you. Uh, I took a, a man, but it could be a woman. And you encounter a virus. There is a virus, coronavirus, uh, and you hear about the virus. And how are you going to react? Uh, what is your reaction on this threat of the virus? Uh, and this is completely different in, in humans. So let, here I, I, I had a model. I, I worked out this model for many years. I'm working in this, this area almost for 35 years. So I took all kinds of information together. And, you know, um, let's say this is the, the, the virus. Huh? This is the threat of the virus. Not the virus itself, but it is the threat of the virus. So, you know, you have people, they, they react, react with a social reaction. It means that they are in balance, you know, they talk about the virus, they sleep well, they are not afraid, they are in balance. And balance, balance, imbalance means movement. So you hear their voice, you see it in the face, you see it in the complete body because there is dynamics in the system. Uh, you see that the heart rate goes up and goes down. There is not a con constant high heart rate or a constant low heart rate, constant high uh, breathing frequency or a constant low breathing frequency. No, there is a comp constant change. And this is very specific for the, for the social reaction. And then you have people who are going to react in a more an ergotrope way of, of, of dealing. In, in the past, we call this sympathetic, but I think it's, it's bad to only talk about the sympathetic nervous system because it's much more than the sympathetics. Uh, you see a reaction of hormones, you see a reaction of, of the immune system, you see a reaction of specific neurotransmitters in the brain and so on. Huh? Uh, but you can say, okay, this is the old sympathetic way. Eh? And then you see people who are constantly uh, fighting, uh, they're looking for articles, they, 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 they organizing webinars, meetings, and so on and so on. And so are, they are constantly in an ergotrope state. They are constantly doing something. Others are constantly fighting eh? because they are scared, they fight. So this is also a way of, of, of dealing with the, the threats. And then you have people who are constantly helping other people. Eh? So this is also a way of, 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 um, of dealing with stress. And then you have people who are in a freeze, you know, and the freeze is a sympathetic nervous system. It is sitting eh, and, and you are going to run the 100 meters. It's the Olympic final, 100 meters, you sit, and you hear on your marks, ready, and you sit, and this is the freeze. Because everything, uh, you pre produce adrenaline, you, produce, you have your sympathetic nervous system active, you have your muscle tone high, your reflexes high, but you don't move. And you see this in people, you know, you see this in people, people come to you in this corona uh, time, they come in a freeze, and they, they produce energy, but they don't use the energy. It's like sitting in your car, eh, push the, the, the gas eh, and don't drive. And, and with the other food you, 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 eh, you break. And of course it will damage your car. This is the inhibition of the action. Freeze is the inhibition of the action and it is very damaging to the, to the system. And then we have the other side. And a big part of, the, uh, of, the, of all the people will react with the parasympathetic way. And this is also a way of dealing with stress. So stress is also re uh, always related to the sympathetic nervous system, but this is a big mistake. And I'm fighting against this thought because it is in all the books, it's in all the articles, it is in, in Porteous, uh, polyvagal theory, uh, theory and so on. And it is a complete mistake uh, because there are people who are acting with a parasympathetic way. Hey, they sit down, you have people who are fainting, you know, they, they faint, they don't have the energy, they, they feel tired, they are parasympathetic active, their, their heart frequency goes down, uh, they, the blood pressure goes down, you know, they, they, the, only do is, the only thing they are doing is digesting. This is also a way of dealing with, with stress. In animals, you see a specific reaction, what we call 
tonic immobility and, and uh, they, they, they freeze and then they find, uh, faint. And this is not so seen in, not so meant much seen in, in, in humans. Uh, sometimes you can see it in humans. And this is a little bit of a combination of an ergotrope reaction and a trophotrope reaction. The freezing is the, 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 the superficial layer, but in the deep, you see that the heart rate is going down and that's the way uh, they, they faint. And, and some, some people, uh, some, some animals, can die of this. Eh? This can be a very, very strong reaction. And I think many people in the society are reacting with this trophotropic reaction. It's the way eh, they, they react with, 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 with stress. So eh, when you react um, on, a, on a threat, eh, the best way reacting on a threat is socially, is being balanced, is to laugh, to, to, to do social talk and so on. Uh, but sometimes you freeze, you flight, you fight, or you overreact in helping others. And sometimes you faint. Uh, when you are tortured, everybody, everybody present will first react with a freeze in torturing. But at the end, we all will faint. So we all have a certain level of stress that will bring us into the faint. And then you will go from sympathetic, as you like to call it sympathetic, go over in parasympathetic. Eh? And, and remember, many people that come to our practice who are overweighted, have problems in digestion and so on, diabetes, eh, are in this more trophotropic state. So when we go to the scope of osteopathy, and we look at the biopsychosocial model, what we are going to, to talk about, what Matt is going to talk about this evening. Uh, we see that when there is a systemic problem, a systemic somato dysfunction at the level of the biopsychosocial model, it will influence all the other models. It will influence the mechanics. You will freeze or faint. Your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system will out, be out of balance. It will influence your respiratory, circulatory system. And of course, your bioenergetic and metabolic system uh, is, um, is disturbed. So when we look at the triune model of AT still, uh, the man is a body, a soul, and a spirit. I think uh, by adding the biopsychosocial model of, of, uh, into the model of five and adding the work of uh, Matt into our work, I think we, we really support the vision of Andrew Taylor Still, who told us that, that, that the spirit and the soul, and we can discuss what exactly is the soul and what is exactly is the spirit. Uh, but let's say the mind, we bring in the mind in our treatment, is a very, very essential part. So this is my introduction. Um, I, I, I will stop the sharing of my, my screen. I will uh, um, uh, unmute my, uh, my uh, microphone and uh, Matt can take over. When there are questions uh, afterwards, I will, uh, I will hear that from you, okay? So Matt, it's up to you. Thank you. I've enjoyed that. I've, act I've actually took a few notes, so I'm going to come back to you with them too. So let me see if I click the screen up. Let me see, does that go to main screen? Is my screen sharing now? Yeah. Rene, yeah. Is my screen sharing? Or... I, I, I can't hear. Can anybody hear me? Am I chatting to myself? I can hear you, Matt, but it doesn't look like your screen's showing yet. The screen isn't sharing, no? Yeah. Anybody speak? The screen. the screen isn't sharing, right, then let me see. Back into Rennie. You hear us? From the Netherlands, here we are. Back into Rennie. Where is Rennie? Yeah, hello, uh, Matt. I don't, I don't see your screen. I stopped the sharing. It must be possible for you to, uh, to share the screen. Mm. I could see it. Interesting. It, it, I think it was mine, uh, Andrew, I, or somebody. I don't exactly know who said that, but 
Antoine here. I can see oh, you. Okay. Yeah, but it was my screen. It was not Matt's screen. I did see Matt. Yeah, but not the screen, not the PowerPoint. Okay, sorry. So what am I doing, Gang? Any, anybody to help me? Jorek, are you there? Or Stephanie? Uh, I'm minimizing everything. And as I go, to see if I can actually find where the Zoom guys are going. I can hear yeah. the news, so that's good. It's in the um, bottom of your screen in the middle, Matt, the share screen button. Um, it's a green one. I absolutely hear you guys. Let me see. Zoom. There we go. I'm still in the meeting. Share screen. Yes. Wow. There we go. I've got too many things open on my desktop. There yeah. you go. There ah. we go. Now we're back in the game. Good, good, good. Ah, good evening, Hank and Carla. How are you doing? Right then. So, a date with fear. So, thank you for that introduction, Rennie. Here we go. So, uh, this evening I took a shave because Rennie is always so clean shaven. I thought I better have a you know, take a leaf out of his book. But uh, otherwise, that's the hairy badger on here, which is me. Uh, I will be toning back my accent. I've been obviously living in Newcastle for a while now. So my accent has gone local. These are some of the books I've covered. And my partner Lisa and I were chatting last week and we discovered there is only one subject that I've actually been studying for over 20 years. Fear. F-E-A-R, fear. And when we were looking inside the saboteur within, we realized, just how many different types of fear I'd be listing. Now, some people are taking therapy because they're afraid to be happy. There are some people who are afraid to be successful. Yeah, some people are afraid to have a relationship. And so fear plays a very big part. But what we realized was that anybody who, any parents out here, Anybody who's ever had a young child up until about the age of two or three, fear does not reside there. That's why we call them terrible twos, because children at that age will get into anything. So fear hasn't come along yet. So what happened uh, in January of this year, we had Professor Daniel Berkmans came along from uh, Leuven University and he put his devices on some clients and we were actually able to capture my work. So suddenly it became a lot more scientific. For years it's been Matt's a crazy lunatic but he seems to get results and now it's actually looking to be scientific and we can capture and we can actually make use of the work that we're doing. So sadly, this hasn't happened here yet with the clinical trials. The, the, the chief of the fire service has said, yes, we should have begun, but COVID-19 came along. So we decided we'd begin in another month or two, and then we can get some real-time results. Uh, an evolutionary approach to rectifying mental health. And hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll have a better idea of where I'm heading with it. And I'll have a better idea of which button to push when I want. Ah, there we go. So if you imagine this is your eye, and I was from the side here, so you've got blue eyes this evening. So then outside of you, this an adaptive process. This is the process that every other animal shares with us. So there's information in the world, which is a, an emotional memory images. But those emotions only come in the instant. So I'm an antelope, I'm a gazelle, I'm wandering around the, the forests, a, a tiger or a leopard chases me. I see, I get that emotion. It triggers my system. So I have a perceived threat and it all happens in a split second. That split second is so keen to this. So in that, my system arms me up. I'm aroused, I'm engaged. 
So this is an adaptive process because once I've outrun the predator, my system calms down again, I recover and I go back to munching grass. And that's where the, oh, that's where the adaptation comes in, adapting. Let's see, get that button. So we're adapting in the moment. Now, that would be for any other animal on the planet. That was us and how we actually got to this point in time. But now we've got the maladaptive process. And this is only particular to humans. And it's actually particularly to pets of humans too, because you can find dogs beginning to, to not shake off their fears because they're picking up off their human. There's a, a brilliant uh, series called The Dog Whisperer, Caesar Milan. And you watch Caesar Milan and what he says, I think it's to quote him correctly, he says, I train people, I rehabilitate dogs. Because what's happening is they're going just like us, an event happens. Now the event is then held outside here, extracorporeal. And because it was too negative for our system to deal with, it remains out here in front of the eyes. So that split second continues to fail over and over. And then we end up with an adapted response. And this adapted response impacts us psychologically, behaviorally, physiologically, neurologically, and biologically. So you can see where this lines perfectly with what Rene was just talking about, the, the, the five uh, model, the model of five. So all of this impacts on the allostatic load. So that's all of my work in a snapshot, in a blink, if you would, split second. So then let's start to open that up a little. So this is what I envisage as the screen. If you just, a, it's a, a working area, invisible to the owner of the vehicle. So we can observe someone else do it, but they cannot observe themselves accessing this. So if any of you ever had a plumber uh, come and give you an estimate for some work at your home, or, or a mechanic give you some, an estimate for a work on your car, and you ask how much, you've seen this process in action. Because if you say how much and he goes, you already know it's going to hurt. It's going to be expensive. <laughs> yeah? So what you're noticing is he's literally transferring the ouch to you on a below conscious level. So how is he doing it? Well, there's an emotional memory image that just appears around here. And what I notice is, thankfully I was born with severe deafness. Uh, after the age of 25, I had an operation, so I've got about 40% in my left ear, which just saves all of the, the questions later on. So I'm wired to movement. So I'm able and capable of watching every tiny micro movement that a human being makes. So then I was be able, to, able to put together the fact that the eyes access these emotional memory images. Rather like there's a, a therapy called EMDR. And with EMDR, they, they, they make passes and have you follow their hand across as they pass. Now, it's got masses and masses of scientific proof and evidence behind it. However, they're not really sure how it works because they're looking the wrong way. They're looking to the brain. What I'm inviting you to realize is that there is no science at all, and there are no neuroscientists who would stick their neck out and say, there or there or there is your long-term memory. 
even today, we still cannot pinpoint where it is. We, we have suggestions, we have ideas, we have thoughts, but the amount of data that we store in a thought and just taking this information in, looking around the room, the amount of data that's necessary, it makes more sense that we would keep it here in an electromagnetic field because that would be a split second difference. If you've ever been walking along and a fly is coming towards you and you duck, you duck because you have picked up the fly in your reptilian system. But if we were relying on the current model of neuroscience, that would mean that we would see, check, act, it would take too long. So that split second would cost us our lives. So everything about this system that I'm introducing you is about survival. If you're still here, it's working. So the emotional memory image flush, floods into the system. It hits the back of the brain in an area called Broadman Area 19, visual cortex. Now, the science tells us that if the emotional uh, impact is too traumatic, then Broadman Area 19 shuts down. So it doesn't allow it in. So then the next logical question must be, if it isn't entering the system through Broadman Area 19, where is it stored? Seems like a, you know, a very logical question. And I've gone through the literature and I've been unable to find where it's stored. So I too began looking in the brain first, but then when one sits back and looks at another human being, you can see where it's stored because the system physiologically accesses the same point in time when the event actually took place. So click on. So this is the, the subject of a, a book we've been working on and um, here are just some of the f's that we 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 sort of, we've got the science behind it we we we've got the interest behind it. and there's some beautiful pieces here so it, uh Rennie was chatting about faint yeah and obviously we didn't have faint in this because we've got more f's to put in here and obviously it's my chosen subject so i thought I'd, I'd leave a few on there for you to have a look at and I'm, we're willing for emails and questions later. But if we look at these, one of the main areas, Rene was mentioning faint, so that's a parasympathetic nervous system, but where more look from a, a different position, but similar, the high, high poor uh, arousal. So what we find is if somebody's subject to people, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, right? That sounds huge. Now you're sitting at home, you're watching me, you think, well, I've never been in a war, so I can't be suffering with PTSD. However, I did say emotional memory images. So what if there's something emotional happened to you when you were a child and it's here, and it's still firing. And it's firing in a way that causes your body to freeze or faint or be limp. Now, that tells me more about the time that it actually happened. So people who are in the faint or in the, the parasympathetic system, when that's firing, it tells me that they were children when the event happened and they were children who could not escape they couldn't fight so their system went to faint or freeze so years later this is still firing and we find this with the chronic fatigue syndrome which is als i think i'm not sure what it is over there but basically it it, it flatlines a human being, but it may not appear 
So I'm, I'm doing my best English here because obviously I'm from the north. So it, it may not appear until you're 20, 30, a significant birthday, uh, a significant event, a word, a gesture. It may just sit dormant and then psh, like a sort of a post-hypnotic suggestion, it appears. So there's a list there for us to have a look at. Now come back to it at any point. And then, so here are our clients. Yeah. Like Rene, we, we, we put together a little so slide show for us. So, so significant emotional event. So there you are, you're three years old, two years old, and you have a significant emotional event. Yeah, um, you're, you're sitting, pulling the legs off a spider, as you do when you're two years old, and you're enjoying yourself. But your parent or your caregiver sees you're eating a spider, screams, ah, panic. Now you have a significant emotional event. Now your little brain sees your caregiver, knows that you're safe, and then has to figure out what's different in this picture. So the only thing that's different is the spider, which then puts you into this emotional memory image, but you're still comfortable not knowing because you haven't processed this. The event has just happened, you haven't processed. 24 hours later, you processed. Now you have a memory. See, many children do silly things, crazy things, but they don't have meaning yet. Your caregiver gives you meaning. So when you are sucking on a spider, they scream and say, ah, they, your caregiver gives you the meaning. Before that, it was just something to play with, something to be curious with. So this area here is the defense cascade. It begins the arousal process. But this arousal process can remain for 30, 40, 50, for the rest of your life. It can just remain there. It remains there in what we call the, the upstream. So all of this is happening at an upstream level. Or the psychosocial, the integrative model is all live and keeping you upright. But then, where do our clients come from? Adapted responses. Our clients are coming from everything that's happening downstream. So the limbic system, the cortisol levels, the adrenal levels, all of these are driving survival responses, which are all of the Fs I showed you earlier. They're just different survival responses. So from the survival responses, again, Funnily enough, there are five of them running. Yeah? Psychological, biological, physiological, neurological, behavioral. Yeah? And the funny thing is I was smiling because obviously as I watched Rennie put his slides together, I thought, well, we're talking about the same stuff. It's excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then we've got on the bottom here, you see the allostasis, yeah, and adaptation. So allostatic load, yeah, and then... A lot of people for many years we chat about homeostasis, you know, your balance. But actually, allostasis is actually more important because that's your ability to stretch, to go for a run, for your system to stretch and return. So you have a, a natural allostatic load, a natural flexibility in your environment. And that's what got us from the caves to today where we're able to, you know, adapt in any environment human beings amazing creatures however now we're in the 21st century and 21st century life is like a ticking time bomb and these are the clients that we're meeting so when these clients come along oops i just escaped the main screen let me see can i escape because uh, I want to share something different with you guys. I'd like, I'd love this to really look really cool, but uh, I don't think it will. I'll probably come out with share screen. Should be that one. No. 
this is where everything was working so well, right up until the point where I got involved again. Let me see, screen share. Now I know Rani is on here somewhere. If I minimize, I you have to, to just click on the on the slide on the on the left side of your screen. Left uh, on, on slide sixteen or fifteen, just click on it. Double click. There you are. It's okay like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm after coming back to you guys now. So how do I unshare the screen? You you go to the top of your yeah. screen. There you see unshare. To the to the top, the you go to the to the red sign. Uh, um, in the middle. Ah, sorry about it. yeah, yeah. The pic, everybody's images had moved to the top, so I didn't actually have a top to yeah, work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. There you okay. go. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, right then. So I'm going to do one last screen share because I want to show you guys the sort of things that um, people will appear with. Yeah, screen share. Let me see. So these are what people are going to present with. So as I was saying, the the hyper arousal. And practitioners are seeing these all of the time. Yeah. So irritability, angry outbursts, masses of insomnia, sleeping problems. There is an estimated 16 million insomnia sufferers in the UK. And that was before COVID-19, so God knows what it must be today. Difficulty concentrating, tired yet wired, adrenal fatigue. Yeah, I, the list is endless. But then if we look at what Rani was chatting about from the faint position, then we're in high poor arousal. So this is the inability to escape. So if your client, and very seldom will this client actually appear. That's worth noticing. This client will seldom appear. And that's because of me and Mr. Hank Belliers, who is listening, uh, we came up with a pattern, and this pattern is called the your dot pattern. It basically means that somebody in a hypo arousal state will do anything for their master. Yeah, so it's the state of mind that will keep you locked in. So if we think of um. E ego is a really good one. Um, ego is like the, the Dracula's uh, servant. Yeah, Th This servant will go around and he will do anything for the master. And what we find with uh, uh, these sort of clients, they do not present themselves. They will be sent to you. But, and they'll never mention what the actual problem is because they're not allowed to break the silence. And probably- can I, can I add something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I completely agree. And I think there are also some neurophysiological reasons for that. And one, one of the things is that when you are in a hyper arousal, your, your senses become more sensitive. Yeah, so you feel more, you, you smell more, you, you notice more, everything is more active. And the, you know, the, the, the hypoarousal, the trophotropic state, uh, can be so strong that people really lose their body. They lose their body. They don't feel their body. They don't feel the process in the body. I treated a, a, a young lady that came to me and I asked her, what is the problem? She said, I lost my pelvis. You know, after giving birth to my son, I lost my pelvis. Yeah, and this is called alexithymia. Yeah, and the people don't feel the, the body. And it is very specific. It is also neurophysiological, um, explained by activation of uh, systems that can, can inhibit pain. Yeah, so or they can, pro can produce like morphine, opium substances in the brain and really deeply inhibit pain so they don't feel pain they don't have pain no, yeah, and, and, yeah, the other one you know is complaining all day and this one no, i don't feel yeah. and that's the problem yeah. now what i'm loving about this is this is why i enjoyed the conversation with Rani, is because i with this one what i watch is 
that the the owner of the vehicle literally leaves the vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. Because they were scared out of their skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so the yeah. body's numb, they're detached. And we, yeah. we, uh, there's a line I just wrote in the book yesterday, it's called, lie back and think of England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so guys have a similar <laughs> thing, yeah? But, but yeah. They're, they're detached from the body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when we re-engage them in the body, the first thing somebody says is they feel warm again. Yeah. They're, they're recon we're reconnecting the, the owner yeah. of the vehicle back into the driving seat. Yeah. 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 Yes, and sometimes it can be frightening for them because, you know, they suddenly feel sensation in the body that they did not feel before. So yeah. they, they call you next day and say, you know, it's so strange. I feel the trembling in my body. I feel changes that they did not feel before. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's a good sign, but for sometimes for them, it's, it's, it's scary. Yeah. Sure then. <laughs> now we're going to do a demo. Yeah. <laughs> so, any volunteers for the demo, please? Yes. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, we, we work content free. I mean, basically, we can chat all day. Uh, there is a question I think it's an uh, interesting thing. Is, uh, is dissociation comparable? Yeah, dissociation. Yeah, exactly. It is dissociation, at least. It is dissociation. Yeah. yeah. They're truly dissociated. Uh, if you imagine it, um, it, it's another talk, but basically, if you imagine that the observing you, in a depression, you tend to observe from here. Yeah. So, so you're, you're watching your body going through the motions of the day. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now we're going to watch Rennie in live. Because I mean, they're, they're just, just a fun thing to do. Now, is For it you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're in good <laughs> There are 137 people watching, so I'm a little bit nervous now. Well, well, I start to develop a freeze. <laughs> well, I hope I don't faint. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> now, is it okay that you took your specs off? Oh, yes. There is, it, it just basically, because we want to bring you into the screen as much as possible so people can observe yeah. what I'm watching. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. And the good news is we don't need a lot of information. Okay. So, but if, if what I'm Wait, I will, will pass the screen a little bit closer towards yeah. me. Is this even better? Yeah, that's even better. That's beautiful. beautiful. Okay, good. So, so then, if you remember, you, there was something, and I, I can't remember, I mentioned it this morning to you. There was something you told me once about your leg and your eyes and i couldn't remember what it was yeah can you yeah. Uh, can you share a, just a, a, again you never need to share anything that you feel might be no that you know that i always experience a difference between the left side of my body and the right side of my body and the main thing is my left leg and my left eye and not so much the arms but mostly the the eye i think now the eye is the most and so the leg improved a little bit by doing some exercises. Yeah. yeah. And so you do, you, you, you're trying to pump that muscle up, whatever, by doing exercises to, to really try and bring it. Yeah, back. and do some yoga exercises, grounding exercises, and that helps. Yeah. Now, everyone watching now is noticing that Renny is just chatting, isn't he? No, <laughs> he isn't. Rennie's eyes are locked down here. Now, before I started chatting, everybody could see Rennie's pupils. We could see the weight around his eyes because he was looking at the screen, yeah? <laughs> but because we're chatting about a subject that's jamming in his neurology, his eyes have locked down. Isn't that beautiful? Can everybody see this at home? Yeah? Nobody's seen Rennie look clear at the screen yet. <laughs> And you can feel it. You feel that in your, you'll feel it running in your system. Yeah, 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 I see it. Yeah. Now this is isn't this is beautiful. So Rennie hasn't really told us anything, but his system has told us everything. 
Okay, so I uh, somebody asked me that I double click. So this is better for everybody. Yeah, no. It's, if uh, Renee, if everyone uh, who wants to see you clicks on your um, uh, okay. screen, then everybody clicks on my screen. Yeah. yeah. Just oh, your video. Good. So can, can I get a big picture of them too? Or not? Yeah, you have to double click my screen. I just double click my screen. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. There we okay. go. Excellent. So, yeah. so you'll notice that an interruption came in, and we all get to see Ronnie's eyes again. Yeah. There you see. There he is again. Right. Now, this is an interplay between here's Ronnie, the adult, intelligent human being, emotionally centered, wonderful. But if we go near that particular emotional memory there you had a sneaky little flick in there well done if we go near that emotional memory image his system locks out he freezes which is interesting because that muscle group freezes it's frozen now Renny, what are you experiencing inside your body right now while we're chatting i i feel the freeze I start to sweat in my hands. Yeah, I feel a little more, a little bit more superficial breathing. Yeah, and I feel like my left leg is more cold as my right leg, and it feels like it is. Yeah, it's not a part of my body. Yeah, detached. Yeah, detached. Yeah. So, so this again this is why I was making. So this would would call this local dysfunction, local somatic dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to again to regional keep, or local or regional yeah. or local yeah osteopath yeah. so I, I want to sort of keep my work really inside the the field of the osteopath here yeah? yeah yeah so then the question is where is it yeah i don't know i can see Rennie just told you he doesn't know where it is okay and if we put his thumbs in a vase he still <laughs> wouldn't change his mind he cannot consciously give us the information and this is where our work really comes into its own. Because with over 20 years of experience, you, you have the same problem. When a client comes, the client can never really give us the answer, the, the answer to the problem. And what I discovered was that, and the data tells us that when the fight, flight, freeze mechanism kicks in, the prefrontal cortex shuts down. So we can't think our way out. Mm -hmm. So for everybody viewing, here's the information that Rennie genuinely doesn't know. But he doesn't know this consciously. In a moment when I point this out to him, he's going to know that he knows. Does that make sense to you? Is that okay? Hank, I'm smiling. We've done this one a few times, everybody. Yeah, it's good. Right? So, so ready? Now, you, even though a part of you saying this is exciting, there's another part saying, oh my God. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, so, yeah. But can you see how quickly we can get deep into a process mm -hmm. without having to have you know, the, a story? Because a story is only attached to the smart brain, but the smart brain is disengaged. So the only story we can come up with cannot be connected, which therefore maintains the status quo. So you survive. Mm -hmm. So how old were you approximately when this happened? Now you'll notice Rennie's first access. That was Rennie's first access because he has to answer the question. Now his eyes access it so we know he has the answer, but he shrugs his shoulder like, I don't know. Okay? Yeah. Now that area, you'll still notice everybody, his eyes are still locked down here. But when I asked him that question, everybody notices I'm brilliant because we're recording this. 
Everybody noticed that Rennie's eyes lifted up and across to his left. Screen right as we're looking at him. And he's nodding because he knows he did it. Yeah. Now, if I say it to everybody, do not answer this next question. Two plus two. Everybody, with the exception of somebody who's very bad at maths, <laughs> thought four. Even though I asked you not to answer it, your system cannot help but supply the correct answer. So when I say to Rene, so approximately how old were you, do you think, when, when you first noticed this? Now you'll notice, see that sneaky flick in? <laughs> And Rennie, again, all we want to do this evening is just a little demo, yeah? So even though he's wanting to help me and he's being really helpful, at the same time, he wants to keep his eyes locked. <laughs> Correct? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, he's a perfectly rational, intelligent human being, but his primitive system says freeze. So freeze because... If you follow this process, you may change. You got this far with the old process mm -hmm. and you survived. Mm -hmm. If you change, then you may die. Fuzzy logic. <laughs> yeah? It's kind of fuzzy, but it makes sense. So we're dealing with clients who have fuzzy logic yeah and you notice him nodding all the way through here because yeah, it makes sense it doesn't make sense it's crazy but it makes sense yeah so then we go now you'll notice Rennie's eyes had a quick flick over to his left yeah and you'll notice he's breathing just shifted then as i mentioned it again <laughs> you notice yeah you were watching you it's beautiful yeah? so now what do we know, according to Stephen Porges, what do we know about that breath coming in, Rennie? Stephen Porges, polyvagal theory. Mm -hmm. So the breath comes in to engage the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the whole polyvagal system is armed because that extra breath comes in. However, there's only you and I chatting. So where is the predator? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And this is, for me, proof positive. This is all of the evidence we'll ever need. And in the coming months and years, we're, we, you know, we're, we're after getting more people on board to just to fund more research this way. Because we've got a perfectly intelligent, rational human being, and yet his primitive system kicks in and short circuits the smart brain. Now we're going to take another step. Is that okay, Rennie? Yeah, that? yeah, okay. 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 Brilliant. Now, as soon as you see another step, you see he loosened off again and he's, we're, we're back. Yeah? yeah, that's good. So then, were you aware that the only area that your eyes haven't accessed mm -hmm. are slightly up above you? You see where the pen's pointing? Yeah. Yeah. Just up a little higher. Yeah. And yeah. just up a little bit more. That area up there, yeah. Yeah. Now, what are you noticing when your eyes open that area? There's tension in my head. Tension. Yeah. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice, but did everybody... It, it's like, like, you know, I have to work hard for them. Yeah. An now, effort. It's an the effort. The language fits. Yeah. You see, everything that's happened in that second. Now, for the first time, everybody saw Rennie's arm raised. You raise your arm. Okay. I didn't, uh, now he's seeing, did I? <laughs> I was not consciously uh, doing conscious that. Of it. Ah. So his arm came and it covered the screen. Okay. Interesting, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean? I don't know. Let's investigate, shall we? Is that, is that okay? Mm -hmm. We're still playing? Yeah. yeah, of course. So the word that you use, I use it. it it's, it's difficult, it's hard. Yeah, working hard, you know, it's an effort. It's an effort. Think, it's an effort. An effort. Yeah, yeah. and then, did you notice he just flicked in again just to, there it is, that little flick. Now, this is what I call the bullseye. 
Your dots? You, do you guys have dots? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we beat England all <laughs> the, every year, you know. <laughs> you know. The Dutch are the best. <laughs> do they do have to play darts in England? No. If I see, if I see, <laughs> golf anything, I know you beat England. So I'm not by which sport, right? Well, the good news is this is mental darts, and this <laughs> okay, okay. is definitely going to win. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what we're noticing is that now Rennie's becoming conscious of his eye access. Yeah, and. As he becomes more conscious, you notice where this is where I look at maintaining curiosity. The client, Rennie, is curious. True? Yeah. So if he's curious, we now have him in the original comfortable not knowing state. Mm -hmm. Now, if you flick back in the slides, you'll see mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So before this happened, Rennie was in a learning state. But something happened. And whatever it was, hit him hard, emotionally. It hit him so hard that it would prevent him from being the runner. blindsided him. Now you'll notice that my words are aligning with the presenting issue. So then I'm pausing a little because that's just allowing data and information to flow because it doesn't need to be here anymore. Now Renny just brought his eye. Do you notice there's more eye movement happening here? Now, I'm not asking Rennie to move his eyes at all. I'm just passing information across the threshold whilst he's in a curious state. And his eyes are now integrating information. You noticing? And you'll notice also that his eyes are coming up more, his head's lifting more, slowly, slowly lifting. And for the benefit of the tape, we could rewind the 20 minutes. You'll see Rennie was definitely, yes, that. And now he's <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Slowly, slowly. Now there's a smile. And we haven't shared any stories. All I know is there was a big block. And when he was playing darts, as we mentioned, he was hitting the bullseye every time. Now, did everybody notice? He missed the bullseye. And he knows that. Look at the grin on his face. There's no story shared. So this way the client remains totally 100% with their data. There isn't any need to share any stories. For me, confidentiality is key. But now, Rennie is now, yeah, and. <laughs> and so... When you try thinking about that leg and that eye now, what do you notice? Yeah, there is more balance between the left and the right. It doesn't feel heavy or an effort or pressure. No, it's, it's, it's changed. It's a change. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll notice that still the, the arm is now flicking. You see, we're getting a bit more arm moving here. Obviously, because mm -hmm. we're where this goes for the eyes, but obviously his arm is bouncing there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing more body movement. Mm -hmm. So with this, we that would be a session. We'd do that shift and then we'd come back in a week or two and just notice mm -hmm. because the system has to integrate. And at the moment, what I'm doing is, uh, if, if any of you want it, it's, it's for free, then just as a, a, a goodwill gesture, what I would do now is I'd offer you, which I've gone to anyway, which is the download, which is getting well again. Yeah. And it's for free. And I'd want you to listen to it once a day for the next seven days. Better in the morning. The reason being, as, as any good neurologist knows, when you wake up every morning, 
your system reboots as you. So what we do is we intervene with the reboot every morning for seven days. So for seven days, you have me ta-da, in your ears, playing with your mind to loosen that shift. And that loosens the whole chemistry so that you've just got more you. Is that okay? Yeah, fantastic. So what are you experiencing now? Look at that. It feels, it feels, it feels yeah, I feel relaxed. And yeah. you'll notice the eye, he gives us a big full eye, just open. Yeah. Back yeah. into curiosity. And that's the, the, the key chemical. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, as any learner knows, we're, we're all lifelong learners here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the key to lifelong learning is curiosity. Mm -hmm. So if we can keep you curious, what the data tells us is the reptilian brain is wide open. The emotional senses are, are open, but so is, it's a whole mind event. Mm -hmm. So just by bringing you as close to the edge, but having you keep observing, and I obviously make you smile now and again, I do my best. So, so the humor is part of this. Because as you smile, the endorphins, the, the cortisol, everything shifts mm -hmm. so that you're able to be in a better chemical state. Yeah? Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I put back my screen. <laughs> let me see. Yeah. Okay. And let me see if we have some um, questions on the, on the chats. Let me see where the chat is. Let me take my glasses. I take mine off now. I, I, uh, ah, the chat is here. So, people, are there people uh, who have questions about this? That could make life easy if it's new. <laughs> Okay, so I think it was very, very clear, uh, Matt. Um, okay. It was a bit much. <laughs> it was a bit much. Okay, so, so there was a, a, a few uh, questions, not, not too quickly, not too quickly. Uh, it was a, a bit much. It was interesting. Uh, would you say fainting is vagus dorsalis? Um, yeah, Yanni, you know, um, it actually, um, the, the, the complete theory of, of Porges uh, is, is wrong. Yeah? Neurophysiologically, it is wrong. Uh, because he's talking about young vegans and the, and the, and the old vegans. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the young vegas, what he calls the young vegas, was, was already present in, in long fishes. Uh, the first animals that came out of the water and went un uh, on the, on the, uh, 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 living on the land. So it is not young and, and old. And also uh, he, he, is, he describes the influence of the vagus on the, on the facial expression and so on, which is wrong uh, because it's the facial nerve and so on. So there are a lot of mistakes. But yes, when you, you faint, you see more action of the, 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 the part of the vagus that is um, influencing your, the, the, the power of contraction of the heart, not so much the frequency, but the power, uh, and is influencing the digestive system. And that's why you, for example, uh, you can have uh, diarrhea in a certain situation, uh, you, you shed your pants, uh, for example. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's true. Um, Dave uh, talk, ask about um, depression. How do you take a well, look at depression, Matt? What do you think about that? Uh, again, if we're looking at, um, I, I worked uh, at uh, had a depression myself too. So it, it, if we look at a depression, the person is out of the vehicle. And we're finding that uh, quite a lot nowadays, depression's on the up and on the up, 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 because if we think of it again from the um, 
the, the faint position or the hypo arousal, yeah, somebody that's in depression is someone that cannot leave. So they're, they're, they're in a, a poor quality relationship or a poor quality job and they, they can't afford to leave because of X, Y, and Z, you're smiling. So do you know someone in this list? Yeah, no, I, I, I look at the question and, and I know she's right about the question. So I'm, I'm thinking about if I can, uh, <laughs> no, no. Marlies uh, said, uh, would it be, uh, Matt, it's a question for you. Would it be a good idea in Renee's case to help integrate what happened tonight with uh, a chosen Feldenkrais awareness through movement session? For, a, for instance, movement session, integrating eye movements with jaw and leg movements. What do you think about that? Well, again, it, all I'm showing is, and this is where I've learned not to step on anybody's toes. If I stick within the split second, that's all I'm interested in, the split second. After that, if the client wants to go and meditate in a Tibetan monastery for six months or or, or just drink water and you know, anything, it, 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 it's over to the client. All I'm going to present is if we interrupt that split second so that the, the energy is allowed to flow again, then we see a shift. That, 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 that's all I'm bringing with my part because obviously I know you guys have got a, a whole box of other tricks that you know, blow my mind to. So. <laughs> yeah. We have our uh, question of Raymond, who is really uh, a specialist about visual problems. And he, he asked him, causes this stress by Rene reduce peripheral vision field or a focal postural binding? What do you think? Well, uh, I can see the question there. Where, ba -ba -ba -bum. But basically, what I'm looking at is. Um, my work needs, I, I need a whole body of work to, to come and support where I'm at. Yeah, so basically, if you want to look at the field I'm in, there's only me and Lisa and Hank and Carla sort of sitting in it. There, so, so what I'm suggesting is that this is more of an electromagnetic. So I'm looking more of a quantum self. So if we look at from an information flow, whatever that data was it jammed now uh and then uh, next invite me back another time and we'll talk about how it's jammed but just to touch on it very quickly it's jammed because rennie has gone or attempted one identity and the leg has prevented him from reaching the next identity so somebody has uh, a coach or a trainer. So something's happened that's prevented him from accessing the next identity. And we find this a lot with sports people. You know, if they get a sports injury or something, yeah, and the injury won't leave, so they have to leave the sport. But then when you work with them, you find that there's actually something was said by you know, the parents or they, they've got a brother that's a god or you, you, there's something in the psychosocial dynamic of their family network that actually jams and it allows them to exit as a hero. It allows them to leave because the physical problem is real. If that helps. Okay, I just want to, to share a little video with you. So I'm trying to open it as quickly, but you know, it doesn't work. Always, no. no let me see how I can. Okay, I will come back to, maybe I will first answer a question. I've got Sapolsky a points out that uh, in every in breath there is a sympathetic reaction, every out breath is parasympathetic. I think it's completely right. Uh, there are two types of freeze uh, one is sympathetic, yes, and the other one is parasympathetic. Yeah, freeze is not the correct name in science, we call this the tonic immobility. Yeah, and 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 what you see is that. The tonic immobility, you see a freeze on the superficial layer, but in the deep you have a parasympathetic activity. And it's really dangerous because the, the, the heart rate can go down so much 
Uh, you, you look on the internet or YouTube, a uh, film goats, fainting goats. Uh, a goat is an animal that has this tonic, uh, tonic immobility. So it's uh, really, um, really interesting uh, to, 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 uh, to, to see. I can see um, uh, Nigel there from uh, UK because yeah. uh, he's, uh, we're, we're busy at the moment and I'll, I'll share this in, in a, a few months to, with you guys again. But we, we've been working on an app that actually does what I've just done. So, so the idea is, is to, to, to share with the world because there's only one of me and we found with the trainings we couldn't reach enough people. So we're actually putting it into an app so that you, know, you can get help there and then. So you, you, you don't need me. Uh, we've got uh, AI technology and cutting eye, you know, eye tracking software. So. Okay, fantastic. So um, I, I want to share uh, all of you, I want to share this, this screen with you and take a look at this animal. I think it's, it's the best, the, the best picture, movie that, or best video that, that I ever saw. You, you, here you see an impala and it's called by a leopard. And then it's four or five minutes. Just watch what, what is happening. Then you see the hyenas coming. And of course, hyenas all, also have uh, children, I always say, so they have to eat. So. Look at the impala, huh? it's complete. Yeah, the eyes are open. You see the eyes open, is the, you see there is no muscle tone. It's completely, you know, hypotonic. It's hypotonic. And then, you know, the baboons coming. They're coming to help. And you know, the monkeys, they, they really, uh, they, they scare the leopard and they scare the hyena, so. So I skip a little part. Now see what, and now the interesting part for us is coming. So look, you know, the animal, you see no movement. The eyes are open. Now watch the first moment, movement that is coming. The first movement. Hyena, gone. Look at the animal now. The first thing is in breathing. The first thing is the breath. And so it starts to activate the sympathetic nervous system. So it comes from completely parasympathetic. It comes from the trophotropic states. And little by little, the tones come back. Look at the eyes. The, you see the movement of the eyes, small movement of the eyes. And the movement. So this is, this is parasympathetic. Huh? This is the parasympathetic state. It is the faint, because the only way to survive was fainting. Yeah, it's when, when threat is so high, you, you faint. And then the breathing comes back. There's more and more movement of the eyes. Immobility, and then, so look, now this is, what you can see in patients, sometimes this is a freeze. Uh, the patients really can shiver after an accident or on your treatment table uh, because this is, this is really, now it comes in the more in the sympathetic state. It's going to activate the salience network of the brain. It's going to rediscover the body, refeel the body. It is connecting the brain and the body uh, because the brain body connection was 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 stuck it so comes back, back into the vehicle yeah 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 it's come back in back in the vehicle exactly a 
it takes time and then you know it stands up and is is raised from the dead eh? you know and and i think in in this in this little movie you see all the faces eh? you saw the 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 faint which is completely parasympathetic hypotonic hypo arousal eh, with everything no no movement no movement of the eyes uh, heart pressure uh, heart, blood pressure low heart rate low and then it comes back it comes in the the sympathetic nervous system and then it, it you know it's, it's recovery and i think this is what you see in, in patients yeah yeah okay esther EMDR, uh, especially wor uh, works, is working, uh, especially when the working memory is being worked on, it works this also without eye movements. Does Matt explain that EMDR works when it so much working on the working memory, for example, saying the alphabets from Z to A? I don't do EMDR, so... Uh... Is it, is it, are you asking me about EMDR? Yeah, that's a, a, a question of, of Esther. Uh, Esther, what I'm doing is, uh, again, the EMDR is chatting about the working memory and the inner workings of the brain. Uh, I, that's, that's, that's not my area. What, what I'm looking at is actually where the eyes themselves are accessing. So I'm looking at the what are the eyes seeing? So the example we've just given with Rennie is his eyes were jammed down because his eyes would not go to where the block was. So then by integrating and humor and loosening, so I'm not taxing his memory. I'm not putting extra effort on. I'm actually after loosening, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, limbering up, you know, like before we go to do exercise, we're, we're, we're warming up the system. So we're loosening the area. I, I'm not taxing it. So, so that he's smiling and we're aiming for a state of curiosity. So and a curious yeah. state doesn't tax the mind. It, 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 it brings the whole, it, again, I'm a teacher. So my, my, my education is in education. So what I'm looking at is what's the best learning state for the client. If we get the client in a good learning state, then there's no taxing of the brain. If that makes sense to you, yeah? Yeah. So people, um, what we are tending to do is we want to make a, a two times two days uh, course with Matt. Uh, in the, we, we didn't plan uh, yet, huh, Matt? But no. we, we will, because uh, another thing is interesting is to work with pain. Uh, and because sometimes people have physical pain and the pain is really in the body, but sometimes the pain is not in the body, it's in the central nervous system, it is in, on the screen. Uh, and then you can do a lot of treatments of the back or a lot of treatments in the abdomen or do cranial treatments. But you know, when, the, when it's still in the nervous system, uh, you have to work with the nervous system. So, and I know that you have some very interesting uh, things for us, Matt, to, to work with, with chronic I, pain. pain. Pain is probably one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, as you know, uh, t we end up chasing the ghost in the machine. Yeah? Yeah. Today it's my knee, next week it's my hip, then it's my shoulder. It's, and it's like the pain just keeps moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you suffer from a memory loss, from stress, uh, what to do it to bring back, it, it bring it back quickly? Yeah, brilliant. What, what would you, you probably wouldn't do much yourself. Um, I, if, if you guys contact, I, I'll send, if you go on my website, there's a free download, use the download and interrupt the, the process of your thinking is jamming. Mm -hmm. So stress doesn't create the memory loss. If we mm -hmm. think about the, our, our cells and living in a bubble. Yeah. So this area here is your, your main screen interface. If you've got too many apps open, it drains energy. So most people, if they get overwhelmed or overloaded, they can get blank. Mm -hmm. Just the same way as driving your car in the snow. 
Yeah, remember you get out in the morning and you cannot be bothered to clear the whole windscreen, so you make a little letterbox. Okay, yeah, you think when I draw, the car will warm up in five minutes. I'll be okay. Five minutes later, you're on the motorway, seventy kilometers per hour, you know, and you see them. You know, they've just got this little piece. Yeah, but this the systems go like crazy, and you think, shit, why didn't I just clear the windscreen? So that's why we get the memory loss because our system kicks in, prefrontal lobe switches off, amygdala engages because we're under threat. Yeah. 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 Okay, are there more questions? No, I think uh, it was uh, enough. Thank you, Matt, for uh, yeah. doing this, this webinar. Thank you, people, for attending. Um, uh, look at our website. Um, I will do um, a webinar, I think, maybe next week or the week afterwards, because we still can't work here, so we have time, uh, about uh, plagiocephaly, which is a completely different topic, but I wrote an article about that, and I think I have some things to share with you, especially for, for the osteopaths, I think it might be interesting. And of course, uh, we hope to start our uh, courses again in, in June. And so um, we will take contact with, with Matt and see if we can find some dates with you and, and, and organize the, the, the course. So people, uh, take care, uh, stay close, but keep distance in these Corona times, stay healthy and uh, hope to see you somewhere, someone. Uh, some, somewhere uh, sometimes. Okay, thank you, Matt. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.